Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Debbie Jackson, Assistant Director for Stay Work Study, and I'm very happy to see you all here this uh, this afternoon. It's been a while since Stay Work Study has had something new to present, so I'm very excited about that. Um, today, Calvin Rowmaker will also be present presenting today, and we've allotted just a little over an hour plus time for questions after the presentation and we may or may not take that much time but we will see so let's get started um, today we are going to go over some stay work study operational updates if there are any um, also expenditures and um, after we go over that uh, we'll go through the portal walkthrough walkthrough demonstration that calvin uh, will be showing so this first uh, slide is the operational updates. Um, stay work study appropriation has remained at 7.8 million. And this figure has been steady over the past several years. Uh, legislatively, uh, stay work study reimbursements and employer match rates have not changed. And just to give you all a quick refresher of what those are, for-profit organizations remain at 40% stay work study reimbursement with an employer match rate of uh, 60%. Public and private colleges on campus, as well as governmental agencies, um, the uh, is a stay work study reimbursement rate of 60% and 40% employer match rate. Nonprofit or nonprofit organizations, um, school districts, and businesses whose primary business activity is in the field of STEM, um, the reimbursement rate is 70%, and the employer uh, match rate is 30%. Uh, let's see. Going on to the next slide um, is the expenditures, stay work study expenditures for. Um, last fiscal year for 21-22. Um, stay work study expenditures were just slightly over 10 million in gross earnings with over 2 million in employer match. Almost 3,500 students earned an average of 2,900 in stay work study dollars. And of those students, 38% were earned by students in public four-year institutions. 28% were at private four year and 33% at public two years. 91% of gross earnings were earned by undergrads on campus and graduates were 90, were, excuse me, 9% on campus. This next slide is just a quick snapshot of stay work study expenditure percentages by sector from before the pandemic in 2019 and at the height of the pandemic in 20 and 21. Um, during this time when the pandemic started, um, there were options in place to, insist, to assist employers, institutions, and students to continue receiving uh, stay work study awards, uh, awards during the pandemic. And in 2021, 21, 22 fiscal year, we start to see, you know, like a slight increase across sectors. Um, and that was probably due to the options that were available at the time. Also this fiscal year, um, due to the responses from the May survey, um, utilization of stable study dollars, you know, is down across all sectors. Well, most of the sectors but we expect to get a clear picture of expenditures after the fiscal year closes. Let's see. Um, oh, we have, so this is the exciting part is um, our stay work study portal updates. And this is for private institutions. So if you're a private institutions, I hope most of these features um, you find very helpful. I know some of you are already, you know, doing uh, are 
processing with these new features. So I hope this is helpful. So just to go over um, what these are, um, when an employer submits contracts online, they select the colleges that they want to be notified of the contract. Employers are advised to reach out to schools directly as an approved contract does not guarantee a working relationship with a college. Contracts must be approved before an employer can submit a job description. Colleges are notified when contracts are submitted and when they're approved by WASAC. WASAC must approve contracts for private institutions. Um, if you would like to be on your school's notification recipient list, please let us know and we'll get you added. Private institutions are also notified of all new job descriptions. All job descriptions must be approved by institution staff and WASAC staff. This includes both on and off campus positions. Um, also institutions can request changes to pending job descriptions before approval. This is a new feature and will be demonstrated at the end of the presentation. Um, also, private colleges can now upload their timesheet file directly into the portal for processing, for processing using the CSV file format versus using the message, messages file tab that would send the file to the stable study inbox. The monthly recon report is no longer sent to WASAC um, by secure message. Instead, the full recon report is performed by institution staff in the portal. Next, we're going on to a portal updates for public institutions. Again, employers are able to submit contracts to public institutions in the portal. Um, public colleges are also notified when an employer submits a contract and WASAC staff or colleges may approve these contracts. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've added language on the contract that basically states that when a contract is approved by WASAC, it does not guarantee a relationship with, with the schools that they've chosen to submit a contract to. Public colleges job descriptions are not posted to the portal, so this has not changed. Um, employers are advised to contact colleges for instruction on job postings and any other state work study activities. This also goes for private colleges. The cash re uh, request page for public colleges has a new look, but functionality remains the same. Also going on to for public colleges, um, as we all know, year in is approaching and um, I know that year in report is just really exciting for you guys to get it submitted. <laughs> so um, we've done an update on that year end. So I hope you all enjoy or appreciate these new changes. Um, so I'm gonna go over that, you know, a little bit here. Um, the year the year end report can be completed um, in the portal and the notices were mailed on June 12th. So if you didn't get a notice, please let me know and I'll make sure um, I get that out to you. Um, also, no longer will you submit a PDF form. That's the way we used to do it. You don't have to do that anymore. Um, I think that's a great feature. Um, so I hope it's really easy in the portal now. So the portal has a feature for you to complete and submit your year in report. It also automatically calculates institutional refund due if there is any, and also the administrative allowance. You will also be able to see real-time edits such as does the total expenditures match funds drawn down. Also, no more getting signatures. The portal uses a login ID. 
I know for some of you, you know, there were times where you had to wait to get a second signature and get it submitted. You no longer have to do that. Um, the portal will just use your ID, your portal ID. And going on to the portal updates, um, Calvin is going to demonstrate the following. Um, so employer applications review and approval, job descriptions review and approval, the timesheet upload, the timesheet reconciliation, the fund balance, um, formerly known as the summary of account status, um, the public cash request and the year in report. So I am going to turn it over to Calvin and he is going to demonstrate those new features. Go ahead, Calvin. Uh, thanks, Debbie. Um, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, let me close out of this slideshow. Okay. Um, so here's what the new portal looks like. I think most of you have probably already seen it. Um, I see a lot of uh, familiar names, if not faces, in here today. And um, so just to, to kind of give a preview, here is what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to kind of break this up into two different sections. One, excuse me. Uh, my mouse landed in just the wrong place. Um, one, one is for the public institutions and one is for the private institutions. Since the functionality is a bit different for the two. Um, I, I'm going to start with public institutions and I'll, I'll, I do invite you to, uh, th those of you at, at private colleges or, or whatever, I, I encourage you to pay attention to the, to the sections that are for the you know the opposite sector just because I, I do think that um the more you see the more you understand the program and and i don't want you to miss anything but i will do a little call out when i switch over to the to the private institution stuff um so let's look first this this first part is is actually going to kind of apply to both colleges so we're going to take a look at so this is what you see by the way as an institution for the state work study portal. You see this bottom section here that says institution. You don't see all of these. It looks different because I'm kind of occupying the space of both the public and private college. But um, so the first thing we're going to look at is here. It's the employer applications. And I've actually, let me show you just real quick the application that I created to test this just so you can see what it looks like for the from the employer side. Oops. So when the employers create an application, it we've basically copied all the fields that we used to have on the paper contract um, and you know made them into this fillable form. So they enter basic information about who they are as an employer. This I really want to call out here, this institution choice menu here. Um, Debbie mentioned this, but the the real significance of, of this institution choice here is it, it lets the portal know who is going to be notified about this contract. Um, the thing about these state work study contracts are that they can either be between a public institution and an employer or between WASEC and an employer. The, the ones that are between WASEC and employer are theoretically good for all the participating institutions in the state. So. We we do want to emphasize here to employers that this this line here that an improved contract. So just if a contract is submitted and they've selected five schools and I as WASAC staff approve it, that does not mean that all five schools have to work with that employer. If they don't feel that it's a good fit for their for their students, you know, whatever the reason. Um, it's not an obligation on, on the part of the school. So that's what we're trying to emphasize here. Um, and again, this is really just about notifications. So not every single school is notified about every single contract. So, you know, uh, Seattle University isn't getting notifications about employers in, you know, Wenatchee or whatever. Um, it has this other information about 
the employers, tax information, other numbers that they kind of need for reimbursement. Um, I won't go into too much detail about this. The, the employer type, which like Debbie said, uh, determines the reimbursement rate. Address, obviously. Uh, it has these questions about the business profile. Um, and this is kind of what we're, one of the things we're looking closely at just to determine if uh, an employer is a good fit. Um, again, if you're used to the paper contract, you kind of remember these questions. There are these additional ones that, depending on the answers that they give here in this section, there may be additional questions that come up. Like if the employer hasn't been around very long or they don't have a lot of employees, it, it asks them more about their supervising experience. Um, and their essentially their like ability to, to pay their employees, um, which is obviously crucial. <laughs> to this uh, undertaking. Um, but anyway, it asks them about their business, what do they do, ask them where the student will work. It's important to us that we have like a pretty specific answer to this question. Um, yeah, um, uh, it asks them about their, if they have a board of director, directors and what that looks like. Um, then these these last questions, you know, these are questions that kind of do have a right and wrong answer. Like, you know, we don't want employers to say that they have had a license or registration, uh, you know, revoked. Um, but if they do answer, give, you know, the wrong answer to, the, to one of these questions, there's an explanation that they can give um, that we can review. And then this is the contract language that was on that paper contract. Um, it just you know details their their obligations are obligations and if they agree to it they submit their contract um okay so that was that's the contract that's what it looks like from the employer end now from the school end um we have on here i've got it open in different tabs but here employer applications under institutions is going to be where um by the way i am i'm i'm I, I do have my eye on the question and answer feature here. And, and if I do see any come in, I'll, I'll try and just address them as they come in. Um, Cause I, you know, I'm, yeah. So um, just feel free to, to if you want to look at anything. Um, but anyway, so, so this employer applications takes you to this page. It's the employer search. Um, you can search for employers from any year. You can search them by name or by city. Uh, this this page defaults to showing showing you only the employers that have selected your school on that school question I showed you before. So that's because that question didn't exist before. There's by default not going to be a ton of applications that show up here. Um, that that. Filter by school is going to be useful if you're like looking for the applications that still need your review if you're a public college. Um, or if you just for I mean for whatever reason you, you might want to just see that. But you can select this view all approved employers box and you know select the year and you're seeing every employer in the state of Washington. So if it's one that worked with you in the past prior to this portal update, or if it's one that has worked with other schools and just wants to start working with you, this is where you can find them in here. Uh, but I'm gonna unselect this and I am gonna search for the WASAC test employer that I created. So here it is, you see the kind of basic information about it. And if you select the application, then you can do it in more detail. So here you see everything that the employer just filled out. You can review this. Um, if you're a public college, you may have your own way of doing the review, um, or you may, you know, usually defer to WASAC or you know whatever the case may be. But this is where you can take a look at it. If you have any additional questions, follow up with the employer. Um, what I do when I look at these is I set the reimbursement rate. You really don't need to worry about that. Um, but it, it, you know, it's just a thing that has these rules about it. Um, uh, Rahel, this is that is a good question. So the the question is, uh, 
are institutions responsible for verifying information that employers provide, or is that done by WASEC team? Um, it depends. I, I, so I look at pretty much every application that comes in. And if, it, and especially when an employer is selecting like multiple schools, usually I'll be the, uh, not me specifically, but, but WASEC staff will do the review process. Um, if it's just for one public college, I'll usually let them take a look. And in that case, it would, you know, it would be your responsibility, smart responsibility to verify this information um, to, you know, I, I guess like whatever degree is determined by your institution. If you have questions about what we do to, to verify, um, I'm happy to provide more like training on that. I, I It might be outside of the scope of what I want to cover today just for, for time's sake. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers the question. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, back to this page. Again, there's this information that we have here um, that we look at. So here's what we see. So this employer, they selected our theoretical private college and our theoretical public college as the two colleges that they want to um, work with. The one, if they select, uh, if they select a private college, I have to review it because the private colleges don't have that ability to approve contracts. Um, but if they select public colleges, then they can review this. And if it, you know, if it all looks good to them, you can use this approve button to approve the employer. You can also, it's not shown here, but you, there's also a button that says request WASAC review. And that would be what, you know, if you get a contract that's for your school, your public college, and you don't feel comfortable approving it for whatever reason, maybe you don't think it's a good fit or you just don't feel confident about this process, whatever, that, that's, uh, you can select request WASAC review and that just lets me know, hey, this, you know, this school wants you to take a look at this and weigh in. But let's assume everything is good here. So you, the, the test public institution would approve the contract, it takes you to this page that again shows you the language of the contract and you accept the terms and approve the employer. Um, sorry, this is loading. And now it's approved for your public institution, but let's say I also want to approve it so that they can work with, so that, that it's good for the private college or whatever other colleges they might wanna work with. Now I'm gonna click accept. And once it loads, it'll be accepted. Um, there's also, th there's comments that you can make down here. The, the If you make comments, they'll be visible here. Um, it's visible to institution staff and us. Um, and there you have it. That is the, that's kind of the basics of the employer contract. Um, and again, that, that kind of covers both the, the public and private college look at it. Um, uh, next up real quick, a note for public colleges. Uh, we do, public colleges have traditionally handled their job descriptions internally and they haven't been entered in the WASAC portal. And that has been carried over to this new version of the portal. Um, so anyway, that's just a thing to note that the, the, the job descriptions still aren't a, uh, in the, uh, when it, well, I'll, I'll, you'll see in a minute when I, when I create a job description, but, but, they're they're in the portal just for those job descriptions that are at private colleges. Um, but let's go next to look at the cash. Uh, yeah, is there a uh, Katrina asks? Is there a way to export the list of employers once we've set our filters? Yeah, let me return to that page. Um, oh, you know what? I'm afraid the answer to this question might be no. Um, I do think that this is something that could be created. 
however. Um, so let me make a note of this and and because I, I, I do think that, that that should be possible just based on other areas in the portal where you have a similar feature. Um, but unfortunately, I think the answer to the question is is no for now. Um, so let's look now at the cash request feature. And again, this is a this is a public institution uh, feature. Um, so for public institutions, your cash request button looks like this. It takes you to this page um, where you enter your expenditures so far for the fiscal or expenditures as of the date that the cash request is meant to represent. So I know sometimes institutions go back and kind of make like, you know, it may be March already, but you never made your cash request for December. So you're going to make your as of December and then your January and your February. Um, but here's just where you enter expenditures. So how much you've spent uh, on the program and as of what date you've spent that, I'm just gonna say this is as of 6-1, we spent $100,000. Um, there is no previous report. This is like recorded automatically if there's a previous report. Um, another just quick note about this, these expenditures are your expenditures for the year. It's not just your expenditures since the last report. It's just however much the cumulative total for the year so far is, um, or the year as of the date that you're representing here. Um, the expenditure, reporting the expenditures is different from actually requesting the cash. So I've spent $100,000, but I haven't requested any cash yet. Um, and since I've spent it, I want to request it. Um, so I'm entering $100,000 there. Nope, that's a million. Um, and now I'm just confirming and submitting this cash request. Um, and this is what it looks like. I confirm and it's been sent. And uh, WASEC staff, we review these at the end of every week and they are sent to schools. Um, next up is the fund balance page. I'm also, I'm gonna call this out again as a page that is both for public and private colleges, but the fund balance page looks like this. It It is the same as a page that used to be called summary of account status. Uh, we changed the name because I think we've, we felt that it's a bit more descriptive just to say fund balance. Um, and that is what you see. So the fund balance page looks like this. Um, I have an institution drop down, but it should just default to your institution. Uh, and it shows you your initial allocation, whether you've had any supplemental allocations or deobligations from the, um, actually, let me refresh this page because now the information should be different since I've made a cash request. Oh, actually, no, it's not showing the payment because I haven't approved the payment. Sorry. I, I, anyway, um, anyway, this just shows the status of your account so far, how, what percentage of it you've spent, how much you have left to spend, um, whether you've had any cash receipts, you know, i.e. like returned funds, um, this is what you see here. Again, it's it's it is basically the same as the summary of account status, just under a new name now, um, and it looks like that. Um, okay, and this is the last thing I want to show you for the public colleges, and this is the year end report. The year end report looks like this, as a flag. When you select it, it takes you to this page, um, and. This is like brand new, like the the one of the newest things we've rolled out. Um, so here you have, you know, your institution, your year. It automatically populates data regarding your state work study allocation and the funds received so far, and as well as pending payment requests. So if I refresh, I think I should see. Well, now we have a pending payment request of $100,000. That's what I just put in. Um, and here's how, where you enter what your actual expenditures were at the end of the year. Um, lucky me, my hypothetical expenditures were exactly the same as my allotment and my pending payment request. Um, if they are more than that, 
let's say they're a million dollars, that means I need to uh, submit a cash request to Wasac for nine hundred thousand dollars. If they're less, then I need to um, excuse me. Uh, it's not less; it's more. Sorry. Uh, then I need to uh, submit a check to Wasac for for the amount of the difference, um, and. And here I you have your number of students. Again, this is like all the same information that was on the old version. Um, say I have 50 students on campus, 50 students off campus. Uh, and it's got your uh, state share and employer match. And hopefully this all adds up to your total expenditures, and then you submit this. Um, and as these come in, you know, we're going to be reviewing these. If we need any corrections made, that's something that you'll be notified about by email. Um, oh, I see, I, I see a question that I, I may have uh, glossed over, but it says, does the instit institution have to employ Sorry, does the institution have to approve the employer application to, in order to view the job description? Um, actually, let me get to that in just a second, because I, I am now, I have demonstrated what I want. Th these are the features that are applied to the, the public colleges. So we're gonna kind of transition over to covering that now. Um, so yeah, so let's take a look at the private colleges. So. And I'm actually going to create this, create a job description live here for my test employer. Um, so no, for essentially for private colleges, no, I, I, the institution does not necessarily have to uh, approve the application. Um, if the if WASEC staff approves it again, it, that application is theoretically applicable to any school in the state. However, in practice, it's only good for the schools that actually want to work with that employer. Um, so I, I hope that that answers the question, but essentially, no, the institution doesn't have to approve the job description. However, the or approve the employer contract. However, the contract does have to be approved by someone. Um, so Let's take a look at job descriptions. I don't. I need to create a new one for this employer. Uh, and employers can't create job descriptions until after their contract has been approved. This is actually something that I think we want to change because I think it mm, maybe makes them a bit more sense for them to be able to submit both at the same time. But I don't want to. That they, maybe that's too much percent behind the scenes information. So this is a new job description form. First off, I'm letting them know what employer I am. Um, Cindy, uh, do you mind typing in a, a, a elaboration on that? I'm, I'm not sure I, I understand the question um, or, or your response here. Um, sorry. Um, uh, in, in the meantime, so, I, I'm selecting the employer and the institution. Um, and you'll notice again that this this it, this is a list of all the private colleges, but I'm selecting the Wasac private institution um, to submit my job description to. Uh, here's the job title. I'm just gonna run through this quick. The start date is going to be the start of the current school year the pay rate is going to be effective as of the start of the current school year even though i'm backdating it a bit uh it's going to be between 20 and 25 dollars um and we're going to submit it and now let's review it so let's go back to this page and go to the 
So when you, as the institution, uh, select this option here, job descriptions, this is the page um, that we see. Um, sorry, I'm going to take a pause just for a second to look at. I found two employers who listed our RTC institution under 2324. Um, so for if the, since this is for for a public college, Cindy, that, that would be why the, I think the job descriptions are not in the portal. Um, unless you mean that um, maybe there are employers that you haven't worked with before that just added you for the coming school year, which um, I'm not sure if that would be, that is the case, but um, this may be something too, that if, if we can't get to the bottom of this right now, we can feel free to, to email me. I mean, even right after this, you can send me an email um, and we can figure that out. But um, for now, I'm gonna look, okay. So here's the review job descriptions page. Um, by default, uh, I think this will be populated with um, all the job descriptions that are either approved or pending, but I'm just going to search for the ones that are, so here we go, have that. Um, here's the WASAG test employer uh, and the test employee job description that I just created. So here's this, you know, when you're reviewing this, again, you're reviewing the same information that was just, that we just viewed. Um, and the language on here mimics the language that we had on the previous paper job description form. Um, it has an explanation about the pay rate. Um, and, you know, this is like one, one of the things that we're looking for when we're like looking to approve these job descriptions is, you know, is the pay appropriate to the duties? I, I have seen in my time, you know, a, a decent number where the pay is, you know, minimum wage for a job that is, has, uh, that, that I think requires, uh, it, 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 that's demanding a lot of, of the students and I, I, that I don't think is, is fair to pay minimum wage. So just keep an eye out for this, um, make sure that this is actually like appropriate, um, Public, well, I, I won't get into that, but uh, you also want to make sure that these the answers to the job description, educational benefits, and minimum qualifications, that these are like detailed and, you know, reasonable answers. Um, these these obviously are, are not actually, so this is maybe a, a bad example, but um, this, and so here's, by the way, kind of a new thing. So we're looking at this and we see that um these answers to these questions are like not really meeting our standards or whatever we we want some change to be made here we've added this button that allows you to instead of just outright uh outright rejecting the job description you can request that the employer make changes to it so you hit this you type out please uh You, you type out whatever you want to to type out that you want the employer to change um, before you can before you feel comfortable approving this, um, and you select that. That sends an an email to the employer, notifying them that you want these changes made and what the changes are. Um, let's assume um, um, that this employer has received this message now and has made changes. You know, then you can either uh, approve or you know. It, ultimately, you might you might decide to reject this. Um, and uh, just like it was before with the paper job description, these job descriptions are only valid once they are approved both by the institution and by WASAC staff. Um, this is not one where let's say just because WASAC approves it means that it's approved it it um or you know vice versa that that um if just the institution staff approve it's not um it's not yet like a valid 
state work study job description. Um, but again, let's you know say for the sake of argument that you have approved it, you've uh, done this part. This is again like a pulled over from the old paper form. You've selected a classification for the job. I'm going to say that this is a staff and administrative specialist, and you've given it a position number. Um, if you're not already familiar with the position number thing, the, the only thing that you need to know about it is, or the only rules for the position number is they have to be a number between one and 999. And you can't use the same position number for the same, for two different positions with the same employer and institution. Um, so yeah, you know, if you're Seattle Pacific University, you know, you can't have two job descriptions with the city of Seattle that are both number one, um, and you can't have any that are number a million, but as long as it's not one of those things that it, 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 it really doesn't matter what you pick as these position numbers. And I know different schools have kind of different systems for these. I'm going to pick 131 for this, um, because it's, it matches the classification code a little bit and tax on a one. So, um, You've reviewed this. I have reviewed this. It's all good. Now, this is a real and valid job description that can be used for reimbursement, um, which is the next topic. So this is like maybe one of the biggest changes that we've that we've rolled out. And um, so let me show you, you know, for uh, again, for under the institution box here, this timesheet is where you find this. Um, so that takes you to this page. Um, and this, it, it's very important that I don't demonstrate this because it would populate like the real information of, of real students. But this is where you can see all your timesheets for your institution. You can filter by the type of status that the timesheet is, whether it's been already reconciled, whether it's been reimbursed, rejected, um, whatever. You you can filter by that, you can search by name, you can filter by year, and and um and you can also download your results as an Excel like CSV file um if you need to review them that way. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna upload the timesheet. Um, that takes us to this new page. So what you can do here, and I think most of you have already done this by now, but but you know, just if you haven't, um, I think this is important to go over. Um, you download this CSV template, and this C CSV template has rules about what um, you know what can go in these fields. Uh, you know, you just uh, the thing I'll note about this is you know you do want to make sure that you're not adding any fields to this template. You're not changing the names of the fields. So like hourly rate has to say hourly rate. It can't say pay rate. Um, uh, uh, Katrina, to your question about whether we can allow searching two different statuses at a time, I don't know. Um, one thing you could do as a, um, a well, I think no, currently you can't do that. I that is something we can look into. And as a workaround for now, what you could do is download the CSV of all your timesheets at any status and filter that way. Um, but it, let me make a note of that and and we can we can you know take a look at that, uh, the ability to do that. Um, so uh, back to the CSV. So anyway, I think. You know, the important thing here is that the names have to be names uh, that, you know, make sure the social security numbers of your students are correct, that the dates are correct, that your math is correct for gross pay. Um, and yeah, I, I really the important thing about this that I, just, that I really want to highlight is is just to, to make sure to keep the format the same. Um, so you know, don't switch last name and first name. Like I said, don't change the 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 headings. Um, but once you've entered all your information into these fields, which I've done on a 
test file, you upload it here. So like browse. Here's my timesheet upload. Um, if there are any formatting or validation errors, um, that's this is where that will show up. Um, let me just show you real quick what that would look like. So, sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up that file again. And to be honest, most of you have probably seen seen what this looks like before. This is a fake student. As but I hope that's obvious, but I I do want to point that out that I'm not. So let's say the uh, employer identification number is way too many digits. Um, and I try again to upload that. Your error would display like this. It would show you the line where the error is. In this case, it's just line two, which is the first time sheet. And it shows you with the um, what the error is. So you go back in and let me open that back up and Sorry. Fix it again and save my changes. Uh, uh oh. I didn't fix it. Sorry, I apologize. I, I uh, what happened here? Uh, shoot. Um, I, I, sorry, I apologize. That, that is not what I wanted to happen because I wanted to show you the, the, the language that shows up down there, but, um, rather than try and fix this on the fly, I, I, I don't know why it's not recognizing that, um, after I changed it back, um, but what you would see down below here is is a uh, language that's basically a asking you to affirm that the information on these timesheets is correct and that you verified it's correct according to you know um, uh, various standards or, or I, I don't know how it's phrased but but you verify that and you hit select and your timesheet is uploaded. Uh, at which point I'm reviewing the timesheets. I review them as they come in. I approve them or reject them if, if they need to be rejected. If they are rejected, you'll get a message notifying you of that. Um, I'm sure you've seen those. Um, and I make sure that I enter a comment for every rejection, letting you know what the cause is. Um, often it's just that there's like overlapping hour or overlapping dates from another timesheet for the same student and position number. Um, if you ever have any questions about, you know, a rejection message that you've received, just let me know and, and we can work through it. It's, it's, you know, it, it's never anything that, that can't be figured out. Um, Calvin. Yes, I has a question. And her question is, has the issue been resolved where when uploading a batch of timesheets, it shows all types of errors at a time versus one category of errors at a time? Yes, that has been resolved. Um, what what this question is referring to, if this hasn't occurred or if this hasn't um, happened to you, uh, is we were we had a problem earlier on where let's say you had a timesheet file upload and there was multiple errors and they were errors that kind of uh, one was an error that you know the social security number was wrong one was an error that the gross pay was wrong i, I don't know the ex like the exact parameters of what would cause this to happen but essentially what would happen is you upload it you see a certain number of errors listed you fix the errors and then you upload it again and you're notified of new errors that you didn't know were there. 
that has been fixed. So now when you upload these timesheets, if there are any errors at all, you should see all of them at once. Um, and and um, a, a thing to note with these validation errors, like they do need to be fixed before they can be uploaded. Um, and so it, 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 if they do occur, essentially what has to happen is the file needs to be edited uh, to be, to be fixed. And then, and then, you, you know, a second attempt has to be made to, to, to upload it there. Um, and that actually is kind of what you saw with my, with my thing with the employer identification number. Um, yeah, I, um, so anyway, this is, this is what happens when you upload the timesheets. And again, they're, they're paid every week. Um, and once they're paid, you can reconcile them, which is the the next and kind of the last main thing I want to go over here. So this reconcile timesheets, this takes you to this page. And this is another where I, I really can't show any like real, this page kind of has to be blank because otherwise it would be populated with, with student data. So what you see here you know, previously, for those of you that remember, you would download a Excel file from WASAC that was your timesheets that were to be reconciled. Uh, you would review that file and essentially send it back to us, it, you know, and I hope I'm representing this properly, but um, send it back to us, let us know if there are any errors, and then we would go and mark the timesheets reconciled. This is now kind of all on your end. So, what would show up here is a list of timesheets that have been, and actually let me back up just a second. The timesheet reconciliation, you know, the purpose of it is to, once timesheets have been submitted, accepted by WASAC and reimbursed, this is kind of like the, the last chance to make sure there weren't any errors. So timesheets only show up as available for reconciliation after they've been reimbursed by WASAC. So, um, and like I said, I reimburse every, essentially every Friday at noon. So if you submit timesheets uh, today, they won't be ready. They won't show up here as ready for reconciliation until next Monday, um, but they will be there as long as they weren't rejected, which you'll hopefully have been notified before then. Um, so anyway, that's that's what this reconciliation process is. That it'll show you the list of timesheets here. You can also download that list if it's easier to work with as an Excel file. Um, and what I I'll just make a like sort of parenthetical note here that um, for the timesheet submissions, um, wh when when the portal receives timesheets and a student's name is different than what we have in our records, maybe they use in their personal life, they use a name that's like a first name that's a nickname or something different than their legal name, or they are, they are recently married or recently divorced, have had a change to their last name, whatever the case may be, um, the portal is able to still, you know, with human help, um, it, it shows me those cases where the, the names are mismatched. And if I can tell that it's the same person, then I match it. But what that does is that it changes the timesheet. So the timesheet that was, you know, submitted as Joe is now for Joseph, because that's the way it, the portal likes to have it, <laughs> is a crude way to put it. So just to note that for the reconciliation process, um, when there is um when there is a if you see during the reconciliation process that there have been changes to the way a student's name maybe there were there was like a spelling thing which spelled one way on the on their FAFSA spelled another way on their timesheet um those kind of changes are don't you know you essentially like don't worry about them in, in terms of reconciliation that that's not um, that's not what we're concerned about for this process. The, the, the thing we're really concerned about is are the correct number of hours is the correct, 
is it the correct employer, you know, making sure there wasn't a typo with the employer identification number that means that, you know, resulted in the wrong employer getting reimbursed. That's, you know, a rare but possible thing that can happen. Um, really anything to do with like the numbers part of the timesheet is, is what we want to be looking out for for reconciliation. But if you ever see like little small differences between the names, um, you can feel totally comfortable um, with with marking those timesheets as reconciled. It's it's not um, an issue as 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 we see it. So essentially, you know, again, you would review the timesheets that are here. Um, and this this does need to be done every month um, or else timesheets will get like, I, I won't be able to approve timesheets, new timesheets that come on, come in if this isn't done every month. My recommendation is if you ever submit timesheets, just check in the following week and, to see if they need to be reconciled and go through and do that. Or just, you know, if, if there's just a once a month time that you can kind of set for yourself to do it. But that's what that looks like here. The, the, the main difference is, is that instead of sending the Excel file back to us, uh, you would just click this mark reconcile button here. And that's, you're essentially doing the same thing. If there are any issues with the, the numbers part of the timesheet, uh, just let us know and we can fix that, whether it's too many hours, too few hours, wrong pay rate. Um, we can fix that if we'll just, you know, if, if you can just email us to notify us that that's the best way to handle that. Um, and that is what I wanted to show you today. I, these are the new pages we've got in the portal. Um, I do just want to say I, a big thank you to, to all you guys. I, I know that there's been frankly, like a lot of patience involved. Uh, it, during like the rollout of this, um, these processes are are um, you know difficult to roll out sometimes, and, and I know that there have been hiccups and um, a lot of learning opportunities. We're also we'll be shortly kind of soliciting more feedback from you guys uh, in the form of a survey. I hope I'm not revealing too much by letting you know that that's coming, but that is something that we're working on. But again, I just wanna say, I, I really appreciate the work that you guys do and um, and and the uh, the patience that you've shown with us. And again, if there's, if you ever, ever, ever have any questions about how this works or something's not working right, or, you know, you, you just want more, you know, whatever the case may be, um, we're, we're available. Um, the best place to reach out for that is is the state work study mailbox, which is sws at uh, wasac.wa.gov. But um, yeah, I, again, I, just, I I thank you guys a lot for for the work that you do, and uh, that's that's what I have. And I just wanted to add on that um, we can also do one on one training. So if you have you know, staff that would like to be trained on the state work study processes, please let us know and we can set up a time to do that. Um, also, if you have staff that need to be added on to the notification list, let us know that too. And um, we can also do that. So I would also like to thank you. We really appreciate your attendance. Um, again, you know, this is a big change for all of us. And so we need your input, you know, for future updates as well. Thank you. Yes, and, and, oh, sorry, just one last thing. Katrina, I, I apologize that I, I accidentally met, marked your question as answered. Um, I, I meant to hit type answer instead of answer live, but um, I don't think that that's how it's set up currently. Uh, and I, um, I, yeah, I, this will be another thing that, that I think, it, I think this is a change that could be made. The question, by the way, is about, uh, if schools get notified when an employer changes their contract name, um, so that schools can keep up to date on the records. Um, I'll have to look into this more. I'm sure that if it doesn't already exist it, as how it works, that, that 
this can be done. Um, so yeah, I, I will follow up with you on that, Katrina. And yeah, I uh, are there I, I I don't I don't know if we should you know keep open for another minute or two to to see if other questions come in or if we can um, get closed out. I, I guess I'll leave that up to you, Debbie. Um, uh, Does anyone else um, have any questions? That you can put into the uh, Q and A there. We can hang around for a couple more minutes. See one more question there. Oh, thank you, Heather. Oh, Cindy, your timesheet question. Let me take a look. Um, I might I I might want to follow up with you um after this Sydney or Cindy sorry uh about this um but let me view your question again um so okay so for for the the timesheets so since RTC is a public college. Um, well, Debbie, do you want to answer this about the the, the timesheets that are used for employers with public colleges? Because I'm actually a little less familiar with this. But my understanding is that uh, it's well. Yeah, Debbie, do you want to do? I, I don't want to say anything that turns out to be in, incorrect. So. Um, well, I can try, and um, we can also get together with Cindy um, at a later date. Um, but as far as timesheets from an off-campus employer, they should be submitting uh, the timesheets to you. And uh, from what I understand, you know, each school has their different processes on how they uh, process those timesheets. But the employer should be submitting them to you. But I think the question, Debbie, is do those do those have to be the WASAC timesheet or can like the the um i think she called it the cdc link timesheet submission does that does that work as long as it contains the same information yes that is correct okay. it does not have to be the wasac timesheet for public institutions okay that was okay thank you debbie So you all will be uh, receiving a short uh, survey after this, uh, at the end of the presentation. And um, so we really thank you for your attendance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you. All right. Bye everyone. <laughs>